Well, hello, and welcome to uh, Jazz Chat with David Friesen. I have, a, I have a very special guest indeed with us today, an amazing original actress with an amazing film credit history. Uh, she became the first Oscar-nominated actress to be nominated in the Best Short Film Live Action category for her film number one, that same year, she appeared in Heaven Can Wait, for which she received another Oscar nomination, and she won a Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress. In all, she has been nominated for three Academy Awards. She also wrote an incredible book, My Life with Cary Grant, and it's definitely not a tell-all book, which was on the New York Times bestseller list, um, I know once, maybe uh, twice. Um, would you please welcome the stunning, <laughs> the stunning Diane Cannon? <laughs> was that true? Were you? Were you? Uh, was it on the bestseller list twice? Four times. Four times. Four times in four years. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. And, and, and the name of it, David, is Dear Carrie. Dear Carrie. And it is being made into a miniseries, a four-hour miniseries. Oh, fantastic. I am executive producing. I don't know if I told you that. Did I tell you that? No, you did now. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, yeah, right. Diane, yeah. First, first question I'd like to ask you, um, and we'll get it out of the way, you know, this broken world and this pandemic, how have you been navigating through this? Well, there are, there are few bad days, David. Um, and the reason being is because of my faith and my understanding of God. And that's, it's just, I've used this time to dig deeper and to stay closer and to pray more, not just for myself, but for everyone all over the world. It seems to me that this just didn't happen in LA or New York. It's all over the world. People are being told that there's a plague that can kill their kill them. So yeah. it takes a lot of prayer, a lot of faith. And it's been, for me personally, uh, a time of growth. Yeah, I think for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I've, heard this, know, I've heard this from other people I've interviewed. Do people know that we're brother and sister? I don't know. I didn't mention it right now, but we are. We have been for many years <laughs> since the beginning. <laughs> this is Queen Charlize de la Puso Soleil, who's joining us in this conversation. Yeah. Um, Diane, th this is a, a, a taken out of your element, maybe for a moment. Um, you're 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 an amazing award-winning actress. Um, I'm a jazz musician. How did you first come in contact with jazz in your life? When did that happen? I don't know. When I was a kid, I just had an awareness of it, like you did, David. I just had an awareness of it. I was writing music on the keyboards, you know, when I was seven, eight, nine years old. Um, and uh, I became more aware of it, I think, because of the influence of you in my life because I always love music, all kinds of music. But the, the, the jazz that you play is different from most people's jazz. I mean, all my friends that come and, and hear you at your concerts say you're a genius. I just have always thought of you as my brother, I, but, but musicians that I revere, that I look up to, who I um, credit with being some of the best in the world, think that you're just this, genius jazz musician and you play music that I've never heard before so to me that's that's jazz and also Ella Fitzgerald is jazz yes that's right but were you influenced by any by any of some of the great players like Coltrane and Miles and Thelonious Monk did, did you ever come in contact with those masters in the yes. early years 
Miles lived just down the block from me in the in the right. uh, Malibu colony. In the colony, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember this or not, but it was instrumental in my life. I was five years old. I was playing with my little toy trucks on the carpet in Spokane, Washington. And you had a friend who, who was a boogie woogie piano player. And we had an upright piano in Spokane. Huh? Ronald Tui. Was that right? Yeah. His name is Ronald Tui. Okay. He played Bumblebee yeah. Boogie. Whatever it was, I heard it and I stopped playing with my trucks at that time, never played with them again, went to the piano and tried to emulate what I had just heard. That's when I was hooked, when I was five years old and he was your friend, he came over, sat down at the piano and we had an upright piano, Spokane. And that's when that happened for me. I didn't know if you remember that or not. Oh, I just got goosebumps. You never shared that story with me before. Really? Well, never. well. And I have I, another. I have another one to share with you, <laughs> David. I, I'm I'm not famous for remembering names. Me either. God help me with that. But isn't that interesting? How his name came right to thought. Ronald yeah. Tui, Bumble yeah. Boogie. Yeah, amazing. I now I have to confess to you. After all these years, and we won't mention how many, but quite a few. Um, I would sneak in your bedroom in Seattle, which was across from my bedroom. Don't get angry with me now. It's been many years. I didn't hurt anything. You had those storybook dolls. I left them alone. But you <laughs> you had a record. June Christie, Something Cool by Pete Rugolo. And I would go and take that record and I would play it on my little record player and I'd listen to it. I knew there was something there but that stuff was really outside for me. I'd, I'd take it back in your room and, 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 and make sure you didn't see that I had taken it. And then I would do this periodically over, you know, next couple of years. And each time I learned to enjoy that record more and more. But that was instrumental also in introducing me to, to jazz was uh, uh, June Christie, Something Cool. Do you remember that album you had? All you had to do was ask. <laughs> I was afraid of you. <laughs> you were bigger than me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, that's really, no, I never knew that. You never knew that? I thought that was, uh, uh, it was an in interesting point in my life. Diane, um, you are known um, also for being a huge Laker fan. Um, I don't want to state the obvious. You live in Los Angeles, so obviously you support LA Lakers. But why basketball? What is the um, attraction uh, to basketball? <laughs> <laughs> With dad, our dad used to take me to all the sporting events when I was a kid. He'd take me to hockey, the hockey games, the baseball games. I liked basketball, and I liked the idea of it because like for instance when i first went to basketball games in los angeles i sat way up high and it's the only time in my life when i wanted to work my way down because i wanted to sit on the floor and watch these guys play and so i accomplished my dream i have floor seats at the lakers that i worked very hard to get and waited for years but i like being a part of the game and so i think part of what attracts me about basketball is the good looking guys and also their athletic ability. And also, especially in the last 25, 30 years, being being a part of it, feeling like I'm a part of it down there. Yeah, well, you've been a signpost. You and Jack Nicholson both are the two primary stars that support that team. And that's probably, has that helped you at all in other parts of your career? I don't know, David, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I like being associated with a healthy sport. You know, I like that. I like, I like that. I never, I only set out to do it because of my love for it. And if it's helped, that's fantastic. Yeah. Maybe, maybe somebody sees me at a game and says, oh, I don't want to work with her. Or maybe I do want to work with her. I don't know. Right. I, I can't imagine anyone not wanting to work with you, to be truthful. Um, what new projects? 
have you been working on? Well, I've got the miniseries. Uh, the people in, in England now are casting that. They're looking to cast Cary Grant first, and then they're looking to cast me. Who do you think should play me, David? You. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is me. This is me in my early 20s. Yeah, right. <laughs> so. You know, I don't know. I, I, um... I would mention Margot Robbie. I think that would be fun. I'm not familiar with a lot of the new people out there. So I've I've seen some films, but you would know that better than I. Who do you prefer? I, I, I just the right person. I'm I'm completely open to that. Will you have the decision to say yay or nay? Yes. I'm an executive producer on it, which means that I'm a part of every decision made. Well that, well that's good. Uh, when when do you expect this will be um shown? It'll be aired, it'll be aired sometime next year. And I'm also working on my show. You know, I started six years ago. Yes, I've heard the music to that. I was, I was actually somewhat stunned hearing you sing and the compositions. It was, it was, it was tremendous. Thank you so much. I have to give a lot of that credit to Sue Schifrin and Susan Pomegranz, both of whom have been nominated nominated for Grammys. Anyhow. We're trying to rework that now because we were headed for Broadway and Broadway is, has been shut down, you know, for the last year. So we're, we're reworking that. And I also may do a reality show. I'll let you know about that later. Uh-huh. Interesting. A lot of going on. So it, it, it's, it's amazing. You just haven't stopped, have you? I mean, you look fantastic. Thank I know you, you exercise religiously every day. Um, I know you walk the dogs every day. Um, you're active. I mean, uh, I mean, Dad raised you and I on on organic seafood, <laughs> which we thought was pretty weird at the time. Um, <laughs> and remember, Mom used to can every year. Yeah. So, and everything else was fresh, fresh, fresh. Yes. Uh, by the best people in the world. Well, dad was way ahead of his time. Uh, he was into health foods when no one knew about health foods, you know, and right. we we're eating raw yogurt at a time when people didn't really know what yogurt was. So oh, yeah, um, I never thought about that. So that's part of the reason, I guess, why you're doing so well. You've taken care of your body. Um, that God gave you and you're looking after it and this is a good thing. So you just don't stop. I mean, you have a lot of energy. Um, I have the energy of 10 men. What? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I do. I, 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 um, I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for my understanding of what true energy is, you know, and it's all those things you've been talking about. David. Yeah. I've, of course, I know your, your, um, uh, the place where you live. And I've always been amazed at the type of artwork that you like, the furniture, that type that you have, uh, like, you have a piece from uh, South America that is extraordinary, and other pieces of artwork that uh, I find um, amazing. Now, how did you? find your way into that you know david it's curious because my work has taken me all over the world and on my days off i would venture into antique stores and see certain things that i like so i've had things shipped to me sometimes it takes a year from all over the world you know um everywhere and so my house people my my People come in and say, oh, we love it because it's got a flavor. It's got a texture. It's, it's not designer done. It's just pieces that I love that happen to work out and go together. And the same with art. I, I've never bought name art. Um, I've bought other art that has become name. But um, just things that I love, things that attracted me to them, like your music. Well, you know, Diane... Um... The reason I mention that is because there's a there's a certain feeling to this that has uh, 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 
a relationship to jazz, music, improvisation. And I see this in your art. And the first thing I go to when I come to your place is to your nine foot Steinway grand piano. And I sit down and I just start playing. Um, your whole home has this uh, spontaneous, natural feeling. And, and, and it's, much, it's much like a jazz musician um, who could afford it. <laughs> would, have, would have in his or her, her home. And I think that was my initial question to you. I, I often wondered if there was a deeper relationship to jazz other than just knowing that I played it. I remember you and I would sing together uh, in Seattle on uh, the piano that we had duets. We'd sing different songs. We were always playing music together. But I think I remember you talking to me about Thelonious Monk and some other, I don't know if you remember this, master musicians. And I just wondered how you were introduced to that. Because your lifestyle really coincides with um, what I think is a jazz feeling. That's so profound, David. That's so interesting. I've never heard that. But now that you, now that you explain it the way you do, I can see how you would come to that conclusion. Because... I love what's real. I don't like what's phony. I don't like what's fake. Right. Jazz is real. And in order to play great jazz, you got to feel real. You got to play the real stuff. And I think that's what's attracted me to the singers of jazz, to the musicians of jazz. They go beyond, they go beyond. They go beyond the obvious <laughs> and they, as you say, the great ones improvise. Does that answer your question? Um, Not quite. It's okay. It's somewhat. I mean, it gives some, <laughs> it gives some information. <laughs> it gives, let me ask this before, <laughs> before, <laughs> no, Diane, that's a good job. You did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me ask you this. You lived, when you first moved to LA, you lived on Coenga. You had a, a house up on Coenga. And just down the street from you was a jazz club, Shelley Man, Shelley's Manhole. Shelley. Very, very famous jazz club on Coenga, not far from you. Did you ever go there? Did you ever patronize that place? Oh, sure. Of course. Really? Okay. Shelley's Manhole, it was a place to go, a place to hang, you know. And All right, okay. Would come in and out. So you became exposed to that music, possibly in that way, when you first got to L.A. And... Well, I got maybe exposed to it, but I was going to live concerts in Seattle. I didn't wait. I was president of the 24 Club, of which there were three members. <laughs> <laughs> And we'd the, th the three the club. Side, we'd go to the other side of town where all the great black musicians, African American, however you want to call it, musicians played. So I was aware of it way before. Okay. LA. Well, that ex that explains some of that. And also, you had um, a relationship in your uh, in the early years with Mort Saul, who definitely I remember coming down to Los Angeles when I was sixteen. And you took me to um, the place where Mort was working. Um, which one? Crescendo, was it? The Crescendo and the club up above. And Lenny Bruce would be up there and Mort would be downstairs and then they would change. And I remember being in the Crescendo and hearing jazz at that time. And so you, I think maybe you were involved in that lifestyle with Mort probably, huh? Yes. Yes, I was, and with Lenny. They uh, both wanted me to be their girlfriend. Wow. But I was just Mort's girlfriend. <laughs> she was a brilliant mind. Yes, yes Mort? Too. Yes, brilliant. Genius. Yes, I'm, I met him on the road back east. I was playing a job and he was headlining and I was opening for him. No and, kidding. You well, we. Well, I don't know if you remember or not, but we we said we had dinner together and we called you on the telephone. 
uh, and talk to you about that. I don't know if you remember that or not, uh -huh. but I got to speak with Mort and 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 uh, we spent the whole evening. Uh, we opened up for him, and and then he came on and did his thing. Uh, who's we? I would think I was playing with um, Uva Krupinski, the oh, great oh, guitarist from Germany. Relation player. Yeah. Did yeah. you more talk about me? <laughs> the, the whole conversation That's was all about I, you, Diane. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, David, I don't feel the reality of that. <laughs> Nor should you. <laughs> Listen, Diane, um, this, this is great that you did this interview with me for my um, YouTube channel, a Jazz Chat with David Friesen. Uh, it's, it's, you really livened up uh, uh, this program a lot by, by you um, obliging to, to do the interview with me. I appreciate it very much. One last question I ask all, uh, the folks that I do the interview with, I would like you to say something that will offer hope and encouragement for the folks that are watching now. Something of hope and encouragement for a broken world that we're living in. Something that you can offer. Well, I've been broken and I've had times in my life when there were no hope, no hope, just no hope I could see. And there have been times in my life when I thought that should I give up? And all I can suggest, if you feel that way in any way, shape or form, just close your eyes for a minute and ask God to make himself real to you. Because there is something bigger than us. There is something more powerful than us. There is something more loving than us that loves us all the time, irregardless of what we do or what we say or what we think. There's something bigger. And if you, with your heart open, will just for a second say, okay, I need hope. I need to feel loved. I need to feel that there is a future. You'll get an answer. You'll get an answer. Well, Diane, those are great words coming from you we appreciate that very much uh, i want to thank you for doing this interview and being with us today on jazz chat with david friesen uh, god bless you stay well and all the fans that are are checking this out be well stay healthy and god bless you all bye bye love you david love you too diane Great fishing. Beautiful fishing. Anything, Dave. Come on. Hey, the family. Okay. That's right, Dave. This is your life. Mom and Dad will be in shortly. No. Good to see you.